everyone, it's Bethany, and in this tutorial, we are going to be making a really sweet little hand towel. I thought this would be really fun because we are doing a lot of hand washing these days, and with spring here, I thought it would be a really fun idea to make a little spring hand towel just to keep it all just fun and festive. So I'm going to be making a little iron-on towel today and I will be using the joy machine and I'm going to use a variety of different iron-on for this so this is going to be a really fun project because this is going to have us really think through the materials we're using the order of materials that we're using and all of their separate heat settings so for this project you are obviously going to need your joy machine if that's the machine you want to use you can also use any of your cutting machines so this will work on the maker or the explore air too, if you want to use one of those as well. Um, for the iron-on, we are going to be using a combination of smart iron-on. We are going to also use a um, little everyday iron-on piece that I have left, and then we are going to be using a patterned iron-on, and this one is super pretty. I've been really excited for spring because I love this um, print, and I really have been wanting to use this, so I have a good idea for how to use this today. For other materials, we are going to be using um, a heat press mat because we are going to be using the easy press to do this design today and get it, all of our iron on onto the towel and then I'm gonna um, set out my heat protective sheet just in case I need it and then I am not quite sure if I'm gonna need my mat yet based on um, what is inside this box I might feed this in um, without a mat if I if my piece is large enough but if I don't have um, a large enough piece then I need my mat to put that on if you need some help with your smaller smart materials um, once they are cut and um, you're not quite sure how to get those to still feed through your machine I'll post a video right here that will show you why you should still keep your small smart materials um, because you can still get them on to a mat and into the machine okay other than that a weeding tool and a flour sack towel is going to come in handy or any towel that you want to use um, I will make sure that that I link all of the materials that I use in the description box below so if you want to recreate this look then you will be all ready to go um, for other um, oop, actually I'm gonna measure this really quick and I think I'm gonna fold it yeah I think I have it folded the way I want to do it so I think my design is going to be about three and a half inches wide I think that's gonna look really good maybe three maybe three we're gonna see what three looks like so I don't want to go any bigger than three to three and a half and that is gonna be just about this wide on this towel okay so let's go ahead and pop into Cricut design space we are going to design a really sweet little mason jar and flower um, design here and then we are going to write bloom over it so I'm really excited to show you guys this it's gonna be really fun and something you can easily recreate yourself Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to be using two images, and I just found them in the images category over here. So the first one is called Mason Jar Vase, and you can see the name over here in case you want to find it yourself. And then the next one is called Bouquet. So these are um, two images I'm going to bring together to make a really, really pretty little design. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, um, I am going to delete the little oval in the middle. Let me see. Actually, is this a... Um, let me see if this actually can just be sliced out. I'm actually going to slice that out. So I'm going to grab both of them and slice. And I'm doing that because I want to have this be hollow in the middle. Um, I want to make sure that I have just um, a dish towel in the background, if that makes sense. So the other way just had, it was going to cut out a white oval to be placed inside. And I didn't really want to do that um, because the background's already white. So that's really an unnecessary step. So um, I just went ahead and sliced that out so that it instead created a um, little hole in the middle instead. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, get this image all edited so that it will go nicely inside this little vase. So how I'm going to do that is I am going to, let me make this a little bit bigger, I'm going to use the slice tool again. I'm going to grab a shape and grab a square and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the square over the area that I want to take away. So I'm going to take, put it right here. 
and I might have to rotate it just a little. Okay. Being careful not to cut anything right here. Actually, what I'll do is just make this a little smaller. Okay. So I'm just placing it over the area that I want to cut. That looks good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both of them and I'm going to come over here and click slice. Okay, so now I have sliced away what I do not want, leaving, with, um, leaving the only part of the image that I am going to use. So now I can go ahead and bring it over here and I am going to set it right inside the little base. So um, this is just a fun little way um, to, just get it to look like there's some flowers coming out of the vase and to take away part of the image that we're not going to use or see. Okay, so now I'm going to make this the pink color. And then this is going to be cut out of that really pretty um, checker uh, gingham. So that's going to be really pretty, I think. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here to the text box and add a text, and I'm gonna be using the font Aftergrows. This is a font from Font Bundles. At the time, it was a free download, and I'm just gonna be using this for personal use. So I'm gonna write the word bloom, and then before I do anything else, um, I know you're thinking, well, this needs to look a little bit better. Um, so right now, it is all disjointed, and we're gonna make it look really pretty and cursive in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm gonna come up here to the Curve button, and I am going to curve and just make it look a little curvy and um, I think this is gonna really add to the look. So I wanna do this before because the next step I'm gonna do won't allow me to curve my text. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to ungroup and then I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these letters together. So this step, um, what this does is it takes the whole word and breaks it down into individual letters when you ungroup them. So now you can just individually manipulate each little word, or each little letter, excuse me. Okay, and that looks really sweet. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna come back here and weld. Whoops, so if that happens, what you have to do is just click um, back. And then what that meant was it probably meant that this little L went a little too far into that O. So just drag it out a little bit and try again. So I'm going to do that and try again. And it still didn't work. So I'm just going to drag it out and try again. So sometimes that happens. Don't worry if it does. Okay. Okay. So now it worked. So now what I'm gonna do is if you click on it now, um, you can see that it doesn't allow you to do the curve feature. So that's why I wanted to let you know, do it before you um, do the welding. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are just gonna go ahead and place this right here. So I'm just gonna have this kind of placed over the um, little mason jar. I think this will look really sweet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure everything is sized how I want it. So this is gonna be cut out of the navy so I will go ahead and just find a uh, dark blue okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just select everything and remember I didn't want it any wider than I said three and a half so I'm gonna size this down a little bit okay let's do a right about there so that's about 3.5 and my height is oh whoops I did the wrong one okay so hold on I was looking looking at the wrong way. So I'm going to size it this way. Sorry. Um, I was looking right here at 3.5. Okay. So let me size that back up a little bit. Let's do about three because this is getting a little tall. So I'm going to size this down a little bit to about two and a half. And I'm going to do that because it's getting a little tall for my dish towel. And we have a lot of space to work with, but visually I think it'll look better if it's a little bit smaller. Okay, so we have about five inches now. I think that's going to be perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure my joy is selected and we are going to go to the make it screen. 
Okay, so I did check my Smart Iron on and I have some smaller scraps that I really want to use for this. So what I'm going to do is everything is going to go on the mat. Um, this is going to allow me to place non-smart materials or smaller smart materials onto the mat and feed them through the joy. So I'm going to select on mat and click done. And now what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to review my artwork and make sure that everything is where I want it to be. This all looks really good. Um, and then the bloom. So this also allows you to see how much material you're going to need in case you want to pre-cut anything. So this is a nice little project if you have some scrap materials too because it uses um, pretty small pieces. Okay, so now everything is on the mat. What I'm going to do is since this is iron-on, what I need to do is I need to mirror the image. So I'm going to go through each layer and click mirror on. Okay, so it's really important to do that because iron-on has its own built-in carrier sheet. So once we cut the design, we're going to flip it over to apply it to our towel. And you guys will see more of that once we get to the iron-on part. But for now, just know when you're using iron-on, you need to flip your um, design or mirror your design. So I'm just double-checking that everything is turned on, and then I can click Continue. And then what I'm going to do is I have to go through individually and click the settings for each one. So for this one, um, this was the uh, this was the everyday iron on. So I'm just going to click everyday iron on. And then for the separate um, the other materials, I have to go in and select what I'm using. So this one is going to be a patterned iron on, and then this one will be a smart iron on. So in between my cuts, I will just come back in here and I will come up to material and I will reset the settings. So it's important because all three are different. So you want to make sure that your Cricut knows um, how to cut each material. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to then, let's see, make sure that Everyday Iron is on there. Okay, perfect. So we are all set to go. So now what we're going to do is just load our material and get to cutting. Okay, so I also want to make sure I look up all of my materials on the heat guide to make sure I know what I need to set my easy press to. And again, I'm using three different types of materials, so I want to make sure that I know the heat settings for each one and um, that I know which ones need to go down first um, based on their temperatures. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and do my patterned iron on first. So what I'm going to do is right here is I'm going to make sure that my Cricut easy press 2 is selected because that's what we'll be using. I'm going to come down here and say patterned iron on for my material and then my base material is 100% cotton and I will be using an easy press mat and then I'll click apply. So this tells me that I will be doing 340 for 30 seconds with firm pressure and then I will do a flip and um, press on all of them for 15 seconds. So I'll do that at the very end so that I can do all three at once. And then this is a cold peel. So this is really helpful. So now I will look up my second one and then I will do, um, the second one is going to be the, let's see, smart iron on. So this is going to be that bloom letter. Um, and then the smart iron on is going to be on the cotton again. So this is going to be the navy, and it's going to say bloom. So I'm going to apply. So this one is different. This is going to be at 315, so we are we are going to need to cool our machine off. 315 for 30 seconds, light pressure, and cool peel. Okay, and then our final one, and again, I write all this stuff down, so I'm not memorizing it or anything. Um, and then my final one is just going to be everyday iron-on um, with 100% cotton and Cricut Easy Press Matte. Click apply. And then this one, as is the same as the other one. So this one is also 315 for 30 seconds with light pressure. So this is the same as the bloom. So it's gonna make it really easy on us. We can place our mason jar down first at the 340 with the patterned iron on, and then we'll be able to do the bloom and the pink blossoms together because they have the same heat settings. So that's awesome. Okay, so you guys will see me do all of that in the beginning or when we get to the um, actual pressing, but this is the heat guide that I like to use. It's just on Cricut.com because it really just helps to simplify the process and helps me kind of get my project organized. 
Okay, so I grabbed some scissors too, so make sure you're always utilizing the description box below because I might sneak some materials in here as I need them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the um, pink first because this is going to be our everyday iron-on that it will be cutting out the bouquet of flowers. So when you're doing iron-on, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do si the shiny side down. That shiny side is the carrier sheet, that built-in carrier sheet. So you're gonna do shiny side or pattern side down onto the mat. And then what we'll do is we will open our little joy up here and we're going to just load the mat into the machine. Okay, just like this. And then once it does um, that, it's gonna pull it in, pull it out, make sure that the mat's aligned. And then what we can do is we can press go on our computer or whatever device we are using, and then it will start cutting. I'm gonna also start preheating my Easy Press. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on right here. And then it's going to be at 340 for 30 seconds. And I believe it might already be at there, but if it's not, what you do is you will just hit the temperature and hit up or down to get your desired temperature. Um, and it looks like my last project was 340, so it's already ready to go. And then you will just click the timer and bump it up or down for how long you need to. And again, this one's gonna be 30 seconds. So this is gonna start preheating and it will give a little cute chime once it's ready to go. Okay, so the first one is done, so I'm just gonna click unload on my computer, and it's gonna unload my mat. Looks really cute. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this off, and then the next one is going to be the mason jar. So again, what I need to do is I need to go back into Cricut Design Space and tell the um, Design Space that this next material I'm using is patterned iron-on. So it's all ready to go. It gave a cute little chime. And I did check to see if there was a pattern iron on setting. And for some reason, I'm not seeing one. So I'm just going to use the everyday iron on um, setting for this. So we'll just double check that it will cut it correctly for us. So again, we're going to do pattern side down. And we're going to get that on the mat again because it's not smart material or it's um what we're going to also do it with this as well because it's too small of a smart material okay so now we're going to go ahead and load this into the machine so now with this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and cut away any of my scraps that way i can save what's left over so this one's already done we can click unload and then our final little piece is going to be using this little scrap of Smart Iron-On. This is the navy, it's so pretty. I'll link a project I did with it up here. I made a tote bag with this, and immediately after I made the project and saw how beautiful it looked, um, I went and logged on and got more of this color because it's so pretty. So um, I will go ahead and go into Design Space and tell Design Space that I am not using Everyday Iron-On, but instead I'm gonna browse all materials and I'm going to use smart iron on okay and I'll click done and then I'll get this loaded on the mat so I just trimmed down that piece so that I have just enough so again this is a wonderful way to use some leftover scraps if you have any I'm gonna load that in the machine and this final piece will get cutting okay so this final piece is all done so I can click unload and now we can get to weeding all of the little layers Okay, so now I'm just going to weed out my little designs, and I'm going to use this little Cricut weeding tool. It's my favorite and my weeding tool of choice. So what I'm going to do is this little one has a little bit of extra that I could probably use for a project, so I will save that. And what I'm going to do is individually go through and weed out all of the areas of the design that I don't need. So it's really important that you also keep track of all of your scraps. So I like to place this little um, desktop trash bin that I made onto my table just to help collect all of the scraps um, and pieces that come off. It's really important for iron-on that you don't keep your scraps on the table because if you lose track of them and they get on your towel or if you're making a t-shirt, any type of project you're making, if those little tiny scraps like this come off and get placed on there they will iron on to your project and ruin it so um, I just find it best to make sure that I am always keeping track of where they are um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the little middles of the letters and make sure that they are all weeded out and it was it's all going to look really really cute I'm excited for this I've actually had this project on my little craft to-do list for quite a while but just kind of got around to 
finding what patterns to put together to use. So, okay, so this one is all done. So that is the bloom. So this is gonna show you right here why you mirrored the image. So this is how it was cut. But now when we go to lay it down, we don't need any other types of material. We don't need any transfer tape. It has a built-in carrier sheet. So we're all ready to go like this. And now it's right side up. So now I can just move on and do, this is the mason jar. So, oh, looks like that regular iron-on setting just worked perfectly. For some reason, I thought that there was a um, patterned iron-on setting, but maybe I'm thinking of something different. So, okay, and then we have that little oval in the middle. Okay, so here's this layer. That turned out really cute. Okay, and then our final piece is this little bouquet, and this one is going to be the one that is a little bit more labor intensive with weeding because there's going to be a lot of little middles to weed out. So I'm just going to grab a corner here. I like to start at the, um, the edge and just take off all the surrounding area first. For me, it just makes the most sense, but you can weed however you like. For little weeding designs like this, it may be helpful to keep the design um, available on your computer so that you can reference it, just in case you need to um, reference which areas to pull up and which to leave behind. So if that helps you, then that is a wonderful step you should take. Okay, so this little piece is just finishing up and we have it all weeded. So this one took a few minutes because it obviously had a lot more detail, but it looks really, really pretty. It's gonna look all really, really pretty all together. I love um, a really pretty um, pink with navy and then green. I think the, um, the colors just all really pair well together. So let's go ahead and now we can just take all of our little scraps away in this little bin and now they're all contained, which is wonderful. And then we're gonna double check that all of our um, workspace is cleared. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna remove our mat because it um, sometimes gets a little warm using the Easy Press. Um, it's even if you're using the um, protective little mat pillow that we're gonna use, um, I like to have a bare surface. So I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna get our towel in here and we'll get to pressing. Okay, so I did pre-wash my towel. It's really important that you pre-wash your material. Um, so I did go ahead and wash and dry it. I also did um, go ahead and went over it with the Easy Press. I use it as a little iron before my projects. Just make sure it's all nice and straight. So what I'm gonna do is now is I'm going to go ahead and unfold it because my design is gonna go right on this little section here. And um, before I do that, let me just kind of run over it with my Easy Press one more time just to get some really good creases in there. That will just help me know where to put my design. Okay. So now I'm going to unfold it. And because I ironed it, it has little marks in there. So I can, I'll be able to see where my design is going to go. Okay. So I'm just going to be working in this little section right here. And we can start putting our little design on. So let's just get it layered just to see how it's gonna look. Oh, it looks so cute. Okay. And do it just like this. Okay, so sweet. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my measuring tape and I'm just going to measure my mason jar first because that's the first layer that's going to go down okay so for the mason jar we have about two and a half and about two and a half so that looks great double check double check okay so that's perfect so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to leave that right there and i'm going to go ahead and take my easy press and for the mason jar, it is at 340 for 30 seconds and with firm pressure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay my press right over it. And I'm going to hit the cricket button and that will start counting down. And I'm gonna give that some firm pressure. So I'm just gonna push down on that. And I love it that the timer um, just goes, goes ahead and counts down for us because um, it just helps to have somebody else keeping track for you. I said in one of my other videos that sometimes you kind of get lost, um, you get lost when you're recounting sometimes with your Mississippi's because 
you're thinking about other things and all of the above. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to bring that up. And this is a cool peel, so we do need to wait. So I'm going to go ahead and let that cool, and then we will peel it up. In the meantime, we are going to reset our easy press and cool it down because the next setting, let me see if I can get it in here, the next one is at 315. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my temperature and cool that down and let that go ahead and um, get down to that 315 setting for the second two presses. Okay, so this is cool. So what I can do is I can go ahead and peel up at an angle. That looks really, really good and that's nice and down. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and start layering my other two designs because the sep the second two are both going to be at the same setting. So my Easy Press just chimed saying that it is cooled off to the 315. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my little design right in here. Looks good. And then kind of play around with that for just a second. Okay. That looks great. Okay, now I'm going to do the second one with the little bloom. It's going to look really pretty. So what I can do is those both seem really down, but if I'm worried about it, what I can do is I can go ahead and use some heat resistant tape and I'll link this below. Um, and what this does is it is heat resistant, so it's it's um, good to use with the with the heat source. So don't worry about that. But um, what it does is it just kind of helps keep everything in place. So I can just grab some scissors, and I feel like the this one's down really good. But maybe the bloom, since it's just such a small piece, to keep it from wiggling, I will go ahead and put a little bit of tape on the sides here, just to kind of keep it in place. So now what I'm also going to need to do is I'm going to need to grab my um, protective mat and place it over because you never want to put um, your easy press or any type of heat source on vinyl that doesn't have anything covered. So on bare vinyl. So this um, nice checkered um, vinyl is not covered anymore because we took that that little sheet off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this over over it and then it will protect it when I go to press. So now the second press for both the everyday iron on and the smart iron on is 315 for 30 seconds at light pressure. So we can go ahead and grab our press and then we can go ahead and click the button and this one says light pressure so we don't need to really put any muscle into this one as much. So let me know in the comment section what you guys are working on right now. What projects have you guys been doing to occupy your time? I have a running list in my mind so make sure you guys are all ready to go because it's going to get pretty fun around here. <laughs> Plus now we have the three machines so we're going to be doing a lot of fun rotations. Okay, so that is done. So now I'm gonna pull this up and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it over. Be careful with this, by the way, too. This gets really warm. So you wanna, you wanna make sure you grab it from like a corner. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to flip this completely over. Okay. And I can press it for, I think it was 15 seconds on the back. Okay, so we'll do that. So then click the button again, and then we'll just do light pressure and get the back all done. So they recommend doing this, and it's really helpful just to kind of finalize the project. Okay. So now again, this is going to be a cool peel. So we will go ahead and let this cool down. Sometimes it's helpful to remove the mat from underneath and let, lay it on a surface that's completely cool because that will just help it to cool down faster. Okay, so these have completely cooled. So I'm gonna go ahead and just peel at an angle. And if you notice there are any places on your design that are kind of peeling up or they're not quite down, then you can go ahead and place your sheet right back over. So keep these little sheets until you're all the way done. This one looks really, really good. 
The flowers I'm going to press one more time though because um, there was a little bit of um, hesitancy when I was pulling that up that some of them were not quite perfectly down. So I'm going to go ahead and place that right back on there and then I'm going to place this here and I will just repress one more time. So I'll just go ahead that on there so don't worry if that happens sometimes that happens so you could just repress it but always just keep um, your materials to replace over the little sheets over the design or have your protective mat ready that way you can just protect it okay so we have that good so now we're just going to remove this and let that cool one more time and then we will um, get to peeling that back up Okay, so now that has completely cooled and I can go ahead and peel that up and it's much better that time and it's all laid down. So that is the final little look. I love how this turned out. I think it's so cute and so sweet and perfect in time for spring and it just kind of brings a little bit of brightness and cheeriness to all the hand washing that we're doing. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you all are doing well. Be sure to leave me a comment and tell me how you guys are doing, what you're crafting, what's keeping you busy, and how things are going in your area. Um, and if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. I would love if you are new here, if you would subscribe because we are gonna be doing a lot of fun things on the channel with the Joy, the Explorer 2, and the Maker. So we're gonna be doing a lot of fun crafts. I can't wait to show you guys. And also, we are going to be doing a really fun floral decal on the new, um, Explorer 2 that I got. So if you guys enjoyed the tutorial about how I made and decorated my joy, then make sure that you guys are all subscribed because I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it for my Explorer 2. So I'm really excited. It's going to get a cute little makeover. All right, everyone, I hope y'all are doing well and I hope to see you in the next video.